I was sharing my embarrassment. Like, what is this word? So we see this stump is open. Yeah. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I am going to call our Tuesday, March 2nd, Common Council meeting um, to order. Elissa, will you please take the roll? Pash? Here. Wend? Here. Written? Here. Barth? Here. Holthouse? Here. Wagner? Here. Schmidt? Here. Wetzel? Here. Kilps? Here. All right, if you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First item on our agenda is the minutes of the council meeting from February 15th. Any comments or questions on any of those minutes? All right. Uh, next is comments and suggestions from citizens present. If anyone can go ahead and come on up to this microphone and state your name and address. Hi, I'm Lori Hoffman. Uh, 1009 North 2nd Street, Watertown. Um, I'd like to talk to you about the um, the minutes uh, for the Park and Rec meeting in the council packet today. A Watertown citizen had asked the committee to consider a decades old, or changing a decades old ordinance to allow on-leash dogs at city parks. I understand that Park and Rec denied his request because people who want to exercise their dogs and enjoy green space have Boomer Street Dog Park and Brant Quirk Dog Walking Trail to use. Brant Quirk is beautiful in the summertime, but people with dogs are banned from the park all winter long so the cross-country skiers can enjoy the trail instead. This leaves Boomer Street Dog Park as the only green space available and Boomer Dog Park is perched atop a steep hill because it was installed on the old landfill. The entrance is steep and uneven, and in the summer it gets quite slippery even with the morning dew. After the first snowfall, the entrance to the park becomes increasingly treacherous and is eventually unsafe altogether until the snow melts in the spring. The entrance cannot be landscaped to improve safety because digging in a landfill is prohibited. That's okay for me, though, because all winter long, I, along with a multitude of dog-loving nature enthusiasts from Watertown, use the well-designed and well-maintained Jefferson County Dog Park in Johnson Creek instead. My dog is thrilled with this arrangement because we stop at Johnson, Johnson Creek for his Starbucks on the way home. It makes me a bit sad, though, because this arrangement isn't so good for Watertown. I think you'd agree because the comprehensive plan in your packet tonight states that you want to encourage pedestrian and bicycle oriented neighborhood designs and design neighborhoods around community gathering places such as parks. The value of a cohesive community is being lost for a large portion of Watertown here. I urge you to take the time to really study the current ordinance and how it affects our comprehensive plan and adjust the ordinance to better support the plan. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to comment during the public comment? All right. Uh, we have no public hearings. Our first, our next item then is committee reports. We have the Finance Committee from February 22nd and Plan Commission from February 23rd. Any questions on any of those? We have uh, no old business. And then the first item under communications and recommendations is the appointments to the downtown Main Street Task Force. So there's a list of those appointments for you in the packet, and I would look for a motion to approve those. I'll make the motion to approve the appointments to the downtown Main Street Task Force. Motion by Written. Second. Second by Bartz. Any questions on these? 
Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Our next then is a Main Street update. All right, good evening. My name is Melissa Lampy. I'm the executive director of the Watertown Main Street program. Our offices are located at 519 East Main Street. So I'd like to just uh, chat a little bit about um, some good things that happened in 2020 and talk a little bit about what's coming up in 2021 for activities downtown. Um, I always preface Talking about good things in 2020 uh, with a reminder that there was a lot of struggle in 2020 for our local businesses and our citizens in Watertown. Um, but the bright spot was that people persevered and kept moving forward and got creative and still worked on their buildings. And you know, we saw a lot of, a lot of ingenuity in our, in our downtown and community in 2020. Um, to that end, more than $400,000 was invested in private building projects downtown. We had 23 total facades improved last year. Uh, work began um, on another seven facades and took place on the interior buildings that is still being completed this year, which is outstanding. Um, $20,000 was shared in facade grants last year, which helped offset the cost of nine of these improvement projects. Um, it was a little scary to move forward with the facade grant funding, knowing our events were all gonna be curtailed. But fortunately, successful events in the past gave us a bit of a cushion in our savings account, and we wanted to stay committed to getting those properties finished. Five new businesses opened, even during a pandemic year, which is great. Um, we still had events last year. Uh, some were still in person, uh, moderately, and some were virtual, but we still counted 600 volunteer hours, and that's between running the events and the committees and the boards that help plan these events downtown. Um, these events attracted roughly 2,700 people, and we generated about $30,000 in event revenue. And as you all know, when we have events, that money goes right back into the downtown to purchase flowers, decorations, facade grants. Um, <clears throat> progress, of course, continued on the library in the town square. And if you notice the library today, the cornice on the addition was completed, and it looks fantastic. Um, kind of interesting facts. Uh, did you know there are roughly 85 storefronts along Main Street from Washington to 7th Streets? 6% of these buildings were actively for sale or lease as of January, and our storefront occupancy rate is 89.5%. So I think sometimes think there's a lot of vacancy downtown because some of our bigger buildings are empty. There's a lot of challenges to getting those filled, but as you all know, and as we've seen one by one, we're really starting to, starting to, to, to get it taken care of, which is great. <laughs> Um, looking ahead, the Main Street program is going to be hosting a new event called the Main Street Morning Mixer on Sunday, March 21st. It is a brunch-style cocktail walk. Uh, we like these events because it keeps people moving, doesn't have people gathering or standing in groups for long periods of time. Uh, so tickets are still available. Um, and then the Farmer's Market, the Main Street program runs the Farmer's Market, and that opens on May 4th, so all the vendor registrations are coming back in for that. And we're also gonna try to plan three outdoor bingo events for this summer. Normally we do one um, in March at the Elks Lodge, not feasible right now. So we're gonna see if we can do, we can do some bingo outside. Um, some exciting news on Saturday morning, and hopefully you all saw the Daily Times yesterday, the Historic Preservation Commission cre um, presented its first ever Bill Lindborg Award for Historic Preservation. So Bill Lindborg is the wonderful gentleman from California who purchased the historic Schumpf building downtown and has been renovating that since 2014. That's now home to Ava's Apache Boutique and um, Blush Hair Boutique. We named the award in honor of Bill just for his amazing contribution. And we kind of feel like he kickstarted the preservation movement downtown and got things going. So the winner of the 2020 award was the building that houses the Chic Boutique at 113 East Main Street. But because we had so many outstanding projects, we also created an honorable mention category, and that went to the property at 201 South 3rd Street, which is the corner of Market and 3rd, the beautiful building with the, with, the, with the tower. So very difficult choices to make, but we're, we're pleased with the award, and we look forward to presenting that again next year to another worthy property. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item then is, uh, pertains to the housing affordability report. Um, Jacob is here virtually to answer any questions that you have. Both this report and the new housing fee report are um, statutorily required reports. And honestly, there is a lot of good information in these reports. Um, it's nice listings of different properties and types of properties that we use. Um, these reports take a lot of work to produce. It's a statutory mandate for us to do them. Um, so if anyone has questions on the housing affordability report, Please let me know. Jacob can answer those for you. 
Our second item then is the new housing fee report, which is also a statutory uh, report. Jacob assembles that. Jacob, I, I don't, did you have something to say? Oh, just curious, and not seeing prior year reports, how do, I was just curious what the trend is like. How, can we kind of trend this over the last couple of years? Are we, what direction are we headed? So this is the first year we did the housing affordability analysis. Uh, from 2017 to 220, we we met our, lin we exceeded linear growth projections for housing in the city of Watertown. Uh, we had 190 houses built between that time and I think 159 were projected under the linear growth. We didn't meet the com compound growth uh, projections that are outlined in uh, one of the tables. Uh, it's also in our comprehensive plan, but it, it's really to break down, housing affordability analysis is really to break down all the city's fees and costs and how that impacts a subdivider, not the actual end consumer, but the subdivider and the the purpose of it is to to identify a way to reduce cost on the subdivider by 20%. And as you can see in the report, we did that uh, through reduction of, of lot sizes down to 6,000 square feet and reducing the uh, right of way uh, 72 foot requirement down to 66 feet requirement for dedication. And then there was like an additional 1.57%. We could do that through re-examining re our fees. As you can see, there's a fee table uh, this is the first time we kind of broke down the fees on on a hypothetical 100 uh, unit subdivision. Uh, 100 units being the easiest way to for me to do this, and then also it, it's easier to apply the 60 20 30 rule, which is in the comprehensive plan, which is or 50 20 30 rule, I should say, which is 50 percent uh, 50 percent single family, two percent or 20 percent uh, two family, and then 30 percent multifamily. So this is the best way to kind of project what the cost would be for a developer if they were going to come into the city and look to develop 100, 100, uh, 100 dwelling units that complies with our comprehensive plan goal of 50, 20, 30. Thank you. I hope that answered you. Yeah, I did. Thank you. And I guess to my second part to that then, and maybe I didn't see it in here, but do we have any way to do a peer analysis or a peer comparison of that? For, for communities of similar size and demographic? I'm just curious if we would compare to our peer group. I think I, I think we're the most transparent of anyone of anyone I've seen so far. Uh, I've, it's hard to really see anyone break down their fees for for like the way we did. Um, I, I like transparency. I like I, I don't want to have sub someone coming and trying to subdivide a create a subdivision and be like, why, why is this cost here that we never saw in the report? Um, I think other communities lack a lot of transparency that we, we are showing in our report. So it's gonna be hard to kind of do do a comparison. Okay. No problem. Thank I can look though. Yeah, great. I think we've done some analysis on the wrap number rather than the broken down ones like park improvement fee, sewer you sewer hookup fee i think we have that comparison I'm, you're shaking your head yes so we have that comparison we could probably provide more efficiently um maybe we could start there yeah is that okay yeah so great. jacob let's start with that with that and we've done some work on that before if I'm remembering right Can I come to the yeah for sure yeah some of the apprehension that i had sharing these numbers with you all this evening is that if you're like me, I crave data, and I want to know exactly all the person passed, as you stated, how do we compare to other cities? How, what are they? And, and uh, Jacob is absolutely right. Other cities aren't as transparent as we are with our charts and our information. I do know with um, a recent hire of our uh, uh, code enforcement officer, Del Zwig, who came from the village of Fitchburg, uh, our numbers uh, are under their numbers. We know that uh, Doug Zwig, our building inspector, has talked to other building inspectors in and around the area and knows that for building inspection fees and things like that, we're under cost of others around us. One of the things that we offered to the mayor uh, prior to this evening, uh, she, we sat with her and went through these numbers, that might be an excellent project for our summer interns this summer, one of them to work on 
trying to gather that information from other communities. So we have a comparison. It is unfortunate other communities don't uh, aren't as transparent and as forthcoming with their numbers as there's as our community is. It is a requirement, but again, there's not a lot of uh, policing of these sites to have that. And I don't think we're exactly in a position to uh, narc on our neighbors, so to speak. But we do uh, are willing to research this um, this summer when the summer interns are on board and come back to this body uh, with numbers and comparisons. Uh, our gut is telling us from what information we do know that we are not at the top. We appear probably not to be at the bottom, but we're probably in the middle of the pack somewhere. And I think that's also reflected in that for the developers who do work in Watertown, we get no zero pushback on any of our impact fees or our inspection fees compared to other communities, which again leads me to believe we are somewhere in the pack because no one's pushing back and saying it's too costly to build in Watertown. We just don't get that. Great. Nor do we want to, so <laughs> don't call us now. Any other questions? All right. Um, okay, then our next item is the COVID-19 update. Carol's here with us this evening, so Carol, just give me one second. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, and you can advance to the next slide. So this week, yesterday, in, in fact, um, a new group of individuals became eligible for COVID vaccine. Um, as I've talked about before, um, the state de has designated groups of individuals who are eligible. And then as a vaccinator, we are required to follow that, that um, recommendation for eligible groups and providing vaccine. So here is the full list of eligible groups, and they are listed in priority. Um, the top several priority groups we've already been vaccinating. The last couple weeks, we've been spending considerable time um, vaccinating individuals that are age 65 and older. And the next group that um, we are, the state is prioritizing um, by holding back some vaccine and um, requiring public health to coordinate vaccination for educators and child care staff. And then the rest of the groups would be individuals enrolled in Medicaid and long-term care programs, some public facing essential workers such as 911 operators, public transit and grocery store employees, non-frontline essential health care personnel, and facility staff and residents of congregate living settings. Then the next slide. Um, so the state has been allocated 1,625,875 doses. Of that, um, all the vaccinators have ordered 1,267,105 doses. And there are two, 208, 300, 208, 380 doses in transit and 1 million 436,450 have been administered. And that's across the state. And then this week, the information just was shared from the FDA that Johnson & Johnson's vaccine um, that they make with their pharmaceutical company, Janssen, um, a one dose vaccination has been approved for emergency use. This uh, vaccine will be is licensed or emergency use for individuals 18 years of age and older. Um, it does use a little different um, mechanism as in their production. Um, so the vaccine instructs, instructs human cells to make the SARS spike protein, which then triggers an immune response. And this is known as the viral vector vaccine. Um, a harmless adenovirus from a large family of viruses, some of which cause common colds, has been engineered to carry the genetic code for the SARS-2 spike protein 
And then once the adenovirus enters the cell, they use the code to make the spike protein. Um, Johnson & Johnson has used this, this technique in, um, in their production with Ebola viruses. And in Wisconsin, we expect the first doses to come next week. Um, and they expect that we would be getting 47,000 doses. We, here at the health department, we have given 1,392 first doses, 792 second doses, for a total of 2,186 doses. We continue to work with all of our community partners, and we're excited to have more partners coming online and providing vaccine to our community members. Um, we've had a couple of pharmacies join in the vaccine distribution. Um, so we are able to get more people vaccinated in our community um, and we're making progress at reaching a, um, a higher level of immune protection for our population. Individuals continue to ask, why do we have to wear masks after we're vaccinated? Why do we have to continue to social distance? And the reason for that is, and I'm not going to read the bullet points here, but just generally, vaccines protect individuals from serious illness and death. But an individual who's been vaccinated can develop, be exposed to someone, be exposed to the virus, become infectious and not know it. So it, if I'm fully vaccinated, I, I'm exposed to someone, I don't have any symptoms because I'm fully vaccinated, but I'm infectious. If I don't wear a mask and I'm around other people that haven't been vaccinated and are vulnerable to the virus, they could become infected from my exposure. So that's the reason why we need to continue to take the public health precautions that we've been taking. We are learning more about um, vaccine protection every day, but as each um, exposure happens, we need to make sure that, that we're all taking precautions and continue to take precautions until we know more about the protections of the vaccine. And then our local numbers, we've had 14,100, Sorry, I'm following along in a different slide. We've had 14,139 total case investigations. 11,239 have not been a case. We've had 2,530 total confirmed cases, 2,494 confirmed cases have um, resolved or, or um, have no longer been in isolation. We currently have 36 active cases. We've had 141 probable cases, 186 suspect cases. We currently have 46, or excuse me, 43 open contacts. 3.87% of our positives have been hospitalized and we've had 40 deaths. And then I, again, am providing you with a graphic of the um, age breakdown of probable and confirmed cases. And again, you can see the 20 to 29 year old um, is where we're seeing the most activity. The 30 to 39 year old is the second. And then the 50 to 59 year old is the third largest group impacted. And then our pediatric cases our highest case counts have been in the 14 to 17 year old age group. And then the second highest age group is the nine to 13 year olds. Any, anything else, Carol, before I open it up for questions? No. Any other questions or comments in for Carol? I do. Sure, Mr. Wetzel. Hi, Carol, this is Bob Wetzel. Excuse me for not speaking to you sooner about this. On the city website where the green lights and the yellow lights, red lights are, 
The top one is the only one that's yellow. That one is almost an impossible one to overcome because it requires a 5% or under positive infection rate in a person. <clears throat> there it comes. Coming. I'm going to pull it up for you. Okay. Carol, because she and I talk about sure, okay. staying near every week. <laughs> yeah. A a We're pretty asymptomatic we people aren't getting tested, really. Let me just share my screen so that everyone can see what we're looking at too. But you know which one we're talking about, Carol. So yes, yes. Uh, I'm just I'm just thinking that one is almost impossible to overcome. It has to be so, all cases in in a 14 day period. If you have 20 people who have symptoms get tested and only one is confirmed, that keeps that yellow. Um, I don't know. I don't. Know if I want to say, can we make that a higher number, or is it? Do you understand my reasoning? It's almost impossible to overcome. So I, I do, and I appreciate the conversation. Um, it is something that uh, the mayor and I, and um, my staff person who does that, my epi work, we've had conversations about. And we've done a lot of research around, and we've. You know, we're watching our, our data daily, and there are times we're feeling very confident um, that we're making progress on that metrics. Um, and I will remind everyone who is listening that our, our long-term care facilities are still testing regularly, um, and so that that is part of that metrics as well. But you're right, um, we have fewer people that are being tested um, and more so it is individuals who are symptomatic so we are seeing that positivity rate impacted because of that um, but we know that other individuals like household members individuals who are exposed should be tested and our testing capacity is robust we have multiple opportunities for testing um, but you know, individuals are making the choices not to, to be tested for a variety of different reasons. So this is this is a metric we have looked at, um, we continue to look at, and I know the, the mayor is, is open to conversation as well. Um, we just try to follow the standards that have been established by the CDC. Um, we've used some of the Harvard model as well. Those are things I've talked about, but not for a long time. Um, so we are looking at it and I appreciate the comments. I would say we talk about it every week uh -huh. almost because I have, you know, a very similar line of question and, mm -hmm. and concern. Um, and I think every time we talk about it, I, we have seen improvement for the numbers getting closer to actually, it's obviously not yet green, but it's, it is coming down. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think. For me, every time we talk about, okay, well then, you know, what should it be? I don't want us to um, just kind of arbitrarily pick a percentage. And so the percentages that we have here are, as Carol said, based on, um, I think this one, and you can correct me, Carol, in particular is from the Harvard model, which has been, you know, widely used throughout the pandemic. So I think it's something that we should all continue to conversate around. And maybe what we could do is um, show that trajectory that downward trajectory that I've been told exists to see how mm -hmm. much closer we are getting. Um, but we've talked about it too within the confines of should we be bringing in a vaccine related metric then to exemplify the positive movement that we have in vaccinating people. And so I, I think there's, um, your, your concern is well heard and it's something that we have, I would say for at least a month, if not longer, honestly, okay. been talking a lot about um, the possibility of this holding us up. So. Yeah. But I, I will share that our metrics, um, like many communities across the state, look very good and um, very promising. And our vaccine enthusiasm for um, vaccinations is has been um, extremely robust in our community, which is um, reassuring that we're going in the right direction. The only other thing I'll add to it is we 
we have had the conversation, as I've said many times, but then like the next week, something else will be yellow. So if you look back, you'll see, we don't often back to back to back have this set. We'll have a yellow, another yellow bump in. Um, so I, all that to say, I'm on your page. Okay. Um, Thank you. And Carol knows it. Okay. <laughs> Carol, this is Bob. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, Alderman Watson. Thank you for all your work. I don't doubt everything that you do. Thank you for asking. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Carol, you said most of these vaccinations are for 18 and older. What are they doing for the younger kids? So Pfizer is licensed for individuals 16 and older, and there are trials happening right now for younger individuals 12 and older. But right, but right now, now there is not a vaccine for individuals under the age of 16. And then have you also seen any side effects from people that have had the vaccination? So there have been um, side effects that are expected. Um, individuals have reported back to us, but nothing, um, we've not had any individuals report back any serious side effects that needed to be reported. Carol shares with us um, a slide and maybe Carol next for the next council meeting we could add that slide in of the percentages of the common side effects. So off the top I can. Of the, the highest one has been soreness at the injection site. Um, I think next highest was a headache. Um, you, do you know what slide you share it on Mondays at EOC? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. So we'll add that in next time because it's nice to see what what's being reported. But it's mainly those standard vaccine side effects. So we'll add that in. That's a good question. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Okay. Our last item under this section then is just a reminder um, that the Common Council meeting for Tuesday, April 6th will be moved to uh, Monday, April 5th because of the election. So please make that note in your calendars. Uh, we have no new business. The next item then is the accounts payable. Is there a motion for those? I'll move to pay all accounts. Motion by Wetzel. Yeah, I'll second it. Oh my gosh, everyone's got one. Seconded by written. Questions on the accounts? Alyssa. Wetzel. Aye. Kills? Aye. Pash? Aye. Went? Abstain? Written? Aye. Farts? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. All right, next is reports and miscellaneous business. You have the Joint Review Board from February 12th, pay, uh, the Park Recreation and Forestry from February 1st, the Payroll Summary of January 27th to February 9th, the Redevelopment Authority of February 3rd, the Reserve Balances of January 31st, the Senior Center Advisory Board from February 17th, the Tourism Commission from January 14th, and the Transit Commission from February 15th. Does anyone have any questions or comments on any of those minutes? All right. Uh, we have no licenses, so let's go to ordinances. The first is ordinance 21-13. This is to amend section 290-F, excuse me, 220-9 print F, regulation of licensed premise and licensees. This is of chapter 220, alcohol beverages and other beverages, um, article one, licensing and general regulation. This is here for me and the licensing board on the second reading. I'll make a motion to approve ordinance 21-13 on a second reading. Thank you. Motion by Wendt. Second by Bartz. Oh. Any questions or comments? I have a question. On, on line 10 or paragraph 10. About no live music may be performed. Mm -hmm. um, for a continuous block exceeding four hours in a 24 hour period. Um, trying to get through my, my thick head, is that I mean, you can play from uh, when they start at nine o'clock to one, and then one o five to five o five, and so we're saying um, that you can per the maximum it can be is four hours of music in one twenty four hour period. So we were trying to in allow outdoor music up to four hours, 
but not allow people to do it for four hours and then take a break and then do it for four hours and take a break. So in that 24 hours, it's just one four hour block. Okay. Does that make sense? <clears throat> I just want to make sure that's what it is. That's what I was reading. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep, that was the intention. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this one? All right, Elissa. Went. Hi. Written. Hi. Bartz. Hi. Bolt House. Hi. Wagner. Hi. Schmidt. <coughs> Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. Pash? Aye. All right, thank you. Next is Ordinance 21 14. This is to amend and repeal Section 428 1 through 428 6, Article 1, Music and Public Places of the City of Watertown Code. This is here for me and the licensing board on the second reading. I would approve uh, Ordinance 21 14. Motion by Pash. I'll second. Second. This is Holthouse. Thank you. We have a motion by Pash and a second by Holthouse. Questions or comments on this one? Uh, Elissa. Pash. Aye. Went. Aye. Britton. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Holthouse. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilts? Aye. All right. Next is Ordinance 21-15. This is to amend Section 24-18, Membership of Chapter 24, Boards, Commissions, and, com and Committees, um, Article 9, Tourism Commission of the City of Watertown General Code. This is here for me and the Finance Committee on the second reading. This is Wagner. I'll make the motion to approve. Motion by Wagner. Written second. Second by written. Any questions on this one? The numbering in my packet is still off. You might just before we print and sign. Go ahead and take the roll, please. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. Pash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. All right. Next is Ordinance 21-16. This is to amend Chapter 7 of Administrative Organizations um, of Chapter 7 City Departments of the City of Watertown General Code. It's here for me and the Finance Committee on the first reading. I'll make a motion to approve Ordinance 21-16 on its first reading. Motion by Written. Oh, Wetzel second. Second by Wetzel. Any questions or comments on this one? So this just a... I'm sorry. Is this just a housekeeping? Yeah. Cleanup? So, um, what it really, the real change, like substantive change, is the addition of a administration department, um, and it is because we have um, human resources, information technology, the strategic initiatives position, and none of them have a department they belong in. So we're creating this department so they basically have a home. <laughs> in doing that, that was the sole intention of changing this. In doing that. We realized we needed to clean up the entire thing because there were, um, you know, random boards in this section that shouldn't have been here and uh, offices that no longer existed. So the department heads each went through and provided just a quick synopsis to summarize what their department does. Mm -hmm. So technically, the whole thing has changed. Substantively, A is the real difference. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Anyone else on this one? Elissa. Written? Aye. Parks? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilts? Aye. Cash? Aye. Went? Aye. All right. Then let's go to resolutions. Our first is a reconsideration of Exhibit 9170, which is a resolution to update the 2021 payroll resolution to revise the summer intern wage rates pursuant to our municipal code. This was here from me and the Finance Committee. Is there a motion? What's the difference? I thought we passed this last time. 
Um, there's been a request for a reconsideration of that vote. So no change. No change. Okay. I'll make a motion. Motion by Wetzel. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second by Bartz. Comments or questions? I was one who asked for the uh, Reconsideration. Thank you. I can't get the term. Thank you. Um, my apologies for bringing it up again and, we, and using our time here. This one stuck up on me two weeks ago, unfortunately, and it uh, caught me off guard after I was sitting here and the mayor said this one. And I totally missed it. And it just, as a guy, there's a lot of stuff going on up here. If you're married, you know, ladies, there is. And uh, it just went by my head like, uh, I don't know. A bullet during buck fever, I guess. I don't know. Um, and I didn't talk to anybody in here about it except for the mayor and uh, Jane Allen today and asked Jane Allen just to, if she could just tell those of us who are on our finance committee what it was about and why and if you could just do that. Sure. Can't you do that? Yep. It just went through so fast last time, that's why. Um, I have been with the city for over seven and a half years coming up on eight and I'm I'm very proud of the fact that even the summer that I started here we had a summer intern on staff I even more tickled to say that that summer intern turned out to be Andrew Byer who is now our assistant city engineer so good things do come from our summer interns as it turns out our most successful program with the interns has historically been the hiring of our local high school stem students they, I've had, I think, six now in the, in the seven and a half years that I've been here. Uh, we have been able to retain several of those STEM students, and when they graduate high school, they come on then as a college intern and work summers for us. They also come back at Christmas break and spring break and do work for um, the city and for the engineering department. What's nice about when we hire locally is most of the time those students, because they come from this area, they return summer after summer and stay in the program often until their junior, senior year in college, and sometimes even until they graduate college. It's a win-win for the Watertone, Watertonian youth, and it's obviously a win for the city. When we can't hire within the Watertown area, we have to go outside into the private world and recruit. In preparation of recruitment, we often do our own survey. We find out what Wisconsin DOT is paying. We find out what uh, some of the search engines uh, say, uh, interns, summer interns, engineering interns, Aaron in summer in Wisconsin. And we, we, we look outside to see what the going rate is. In this particular year, 2021, Wisconsin DOT is paying a range of 16 to $20 per hour for their interns. Indeed is a uh, career search engine out online and they state that engineering interns in Wisconsin earning, are earning on average of $16.71. Putting that uh, past hiring experiences and putting together this year's uh, information we came before finance committee to request an increase in our range. And we do that. We did the last time we did it was in 2017. And, and we like to have a range so that as the students come in and they do come back, we can bump them up. Also, it keeps us from coming back to finance on an annual basis to ask for that range to be modified. It gives us a healthy area to work within for a period of time so we're not coming back every year. Different industries handle internships differently. The mayor has an internship program through Maranatha Bible University. And in that case, uh, some industries are able to get an intern that where the uh, employer is not paying the uh, intern directly. But that intern, in this case, when it's Maranatha, they're earning college credits and also receive a stipend from the university. In the engineering industry, we pay interns. Even WISDOT does not have an accredited program that youths, uh, the students can get college uh, credits for working for WISDOT for a summer. In our industry, we pay uh, interns directly as, as I, I could probably speak for uh, older person written where he works, I'm assuming that the summer interns are paid in, in probably in that type of range. Yep. 
There's a window for advertising and hiring our interns. We're in that uh, window right now. And um, we hope to be we potentially uh, hiring a couple of interns through the open process in that we have lost a couple to uh, other opportunities that they're experiencing in their junior and senior years. And so um, we're looking forward to uh, having our range established so we can go out and advertise and uh, acquire the engineering positions that intern positions that we need for this coming summer. Are there any questions? Yeah. Thank you, Jane Ellen. Right. Thank, thank you for, for that. Um, I do have a question for Rose. So, Rose, um, just because if I'm sitting in your chairs, I'm asking this question. We're, cons we're doing a reconsideration of this. So would people, if they're supporting... Um, the exhibit as written, would they vote in favor, just like it was a normal vote? It's a fresh, yep, it's a fresh resolution, just like it was presented for the first time. Okay, thank you. Does that make sense for everybody? So if you are opposed to the resolution, vote no. In favor, vote yes, just like normal. Any other commentary around this one? I had, sure. I was really considering uh, changing my vote to no, but after talking to Jane Allen, and she in our conversation, she shared more than what was shared here tonight, which is fine. Um, I would still support this as I did before. So. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or comments? Melissa. Wetzel. Aye. Kilps. No. Pash. Aye. Went. Aye. Written. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Holthouse. Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Schmidt? Yeah, he got kicked out. He just messaged me. All right. We'll just have to reflect that he wasn't present for this vote. We'll try again at the next one. All right. Next is Exhibit 9173. This is a resolution to purchase two new 2021 Ford Police Squad SUVs from Grinwald in the amount of $73,346.33. This is here from me and the Finance Committee. I'll move to approve Exhibit 9173. Motion by Pash. All second. This is Holthouse. Second by Holthouse. Any questions on this one? Elissa. Pash. Aye. Went. Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. I'm sending him the phone number. I'll give it a try that way. All right. Next then is Exhibit 9174. This is a resolution to award the 2021 pavement marking contract. Um, number 1 dash 21 to Century Fence in the amount of $50,794.90. This is here from Alderman Cash and Public Works. I move to approve Exhibit 9174. Motion by Bartz. Second. Second by Pash. Questions or comments? Question. Sure. Only one bid received? Yes. Um, we used to get two bids. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the the Century Fence absorbed the other company a couple years ago, <laughs> and so in our area, they basically are the only game in town. All right. Any other questions on this one? <clears throat> We're about to go through a series of, appro of approvals that are all are around the annual street project. So it seems like a slew of money all at once, but that's what it's for. So go ahead, Elissa. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. Cash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. All right, next is Exhibit 9175. Uh, this is a resolution to award the 2021 curb and gutter and sidewalk replacement contract, number 3-21, to Renhack Construction, in the amount of $269,759. Two hundred sixty-nine thousand seven hundred fifty-nine and seventy-six cents. <laughs> Carol and I have the same problem. Um, is there a motion on this one? 
Motion to approve Exhibit 9175. Thank you. Motion by Pash. Second. Second by Bartz. Any questions on this one? The comment? Yes. 73 cents, not 76. Ooh. That time I was just reading the agenda. Thank you. <laughs> But I appreciate the close I'll eye, Alder Person Wagner. Uh, that's what I used to. I'll make You'll make the difference. Any, <laughs> any other questions? All right, Elissa. Pash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Colthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmid? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. All right, next is Exhibit 9176. This is the resolution to award the 2021 Bituminous Surfacing Contract to Wolf Paving um, in the amount of $494,386. This is here from Alderman Pash and Public Works. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Wendt. Second. Second by Pash. Any questions on this one? Alyssa. Wendt. Aye. Written. Aye. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. Pash? Aye. All right, next is Exhibit 9177. This is a resolution to award the 2021 Water Main and Sanitary Sewer Contract to Oleski Construction in the amount of $1,339,099. <laughs> this is here from Alderman Pash and Public Works. Move to approve Exhibit 9177. Motion by Pash. Second. This total council second. Second by Wetzel. <clears throat> Any questions or comments on this one? Ms. Ritten. Question for Jane Allen. Um, have, has the city worked with Woleski in the past? Yes. Um, Woleski uh, did, uh, I think it was a 2017 contract, and um, they, they did an excellent job back then, and uh, we're looking forward to working with them this year. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Anyone else? Alyssa. Pash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmid? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. All right, next is Exhibit 9178. This is a resolution to award the 2021 Air Park Drive Albert contract. <coughs> Um, to Wolf Paving in the amount of $310, 238, $310,283. Wow. I apologize. We got a bargain. I, I don't, I apologize. My reading is not the best today. <laughs> I'll move. Motion on this one? I'll move. Thank you. Motion by Wetzel. Yeah, second. Second by Written. Any questions on this one? Uh, Elissa. Wetzel? Aye. Kilps? Aye. Pash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. Bartz? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmid? Aye. All right, next is Exhibit 9179. This is a resolution to enter into an agreement with Duke's Root Control for sanitary sewer lateral inspections in the 1200 and 1300 blocks of 3rd Street in the amount of $11,560. This is also here from Alderman Pash and Public Works. Move to approve Exhibit 9179. Motion by Pash. Second. Second by Parts. Any questions or comments? Ms. Ritten. Another question for Jane Allen. The three bids we received seem to be all over the board. One was like 100,000 more than the others. Um, any reason why that's so high or why the other ones are so low? We know that for Flex also, but we also know that um, we had fewer bids. We had five bidders for the pavement. We had five bidders for the bituminous surfacing and only three for the LRIP. The LRIP is tricky. We're going to be doing the four lanes that are on Air Park Drive down by the Walmart end, and we're going to go just past the first driveway at Barris Brothers. We've also put the responsibility of time and also uh, traffic control on the the contractor, it may just be the subs that they had to get and the quotes that they had to get to do traffic control, to 
take on the, the, the timing of this and working within a very short deadline so that we don't have the street open for very long. But uh, for the variance in numbers, you never know where they're hiding their profit. You don't know what, what research they did or didn't do to get a, get a sub quote. And so it's not uncommon for there to be a discrepancy. Thank you. Thanks for that. I'm, um, I'm going to go to Pete because I think, are you on? I'm either losing it. I think we're talking about the root control. I Perfect. think Jane Oh, I'm sorry. I Jane thought Ellen, you asked okay. LRIP. Yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, no, I, I, I question. I'm sorry. asked about for an explanation uh, on Elver <laughs> Bay so that okay. people didn't think we were doing Olive Air Park. So you read my mind sorry. and provided that. Um, but the root control, I'm going to go to Mr. Hartz. Yeah. Okay. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me just fine? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I noticed they were all over the board too. We actually followed up today with. Um, um, the gentleman at Duke's Root Control, and he's confident in his price and the work we're looking to do there. Um, my only guess is, and he actually did some local calling around to the plumbers in the area before he put in his number, and he, um, so he did a little research. I don't think the other ones did any research into this project. I think they just threw out a high number thinking we might go with it. Um, and we had Duke's root control come in, obviously, very well priced, um, considerably less than than the, the high bidder. Um, so, like I said, we did follow up with them, and we explained what we're looking for with some um, details and specifics. And he's still confident in his price and, and working with us on this project at that at that number. Um, there, does that help explain? I don't know why they're so far apart, but. I do know that Dukes did a little research into this and we did follow up and, and the number he gave us, he's good with. No, thanks a lot, Pete. I appreciate the follow up because those, those were some wacky quotes. Thank yeah, you. They are. Yeah, and we did it. We advertised this on VendorNet, which goes uh, all around um, for, for these, you know, all sorts of different things are on VendorNet. So I think that's where he picked it up. And we did contact the local plumbers as well. We reached out to them locally, um, and they, we didn't get any pricing. They might be too busy, um, and this might be a little bit bigger than they want to want to commit to. So, any other questions on this one? All right, Alyssa. Cash. Hi. Went. Hi. Rit. Hi. Barnes. Hi. Holthouse. Hi. Wagner. Hi. Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Kill? Aye. All right, our next is Exhibit 9180. This is a resolution to approve the agreement with Applied Technologies for the Water Quality Trade Plan Program completion in the amount of $11,900. This is here from Alderman Pash and Public Works. I'll move to approve uh, Exhibit 9180. Motion by Pash. I'll second. Second by Wentz. Questions on this one? Elissa. Pash? Aye. Went? Aye. Written? Aye. Bart? Aye. Holthouse? Aye. Wagner? Aye. Schmidt? Aye. Wetzel? Aye. Pilks? Aye. All right, then our last one is Exhibit 9181, and this is a resolution to approve the amendment to the MOU with uh, Main Street Watertown LLC. Uh, for development of the property located at 111 South Water Street. I'll make a motion to approve Exhibit 9181. Motion by Written. Second by Bartz. Questions or comments? How far away are we from reaching an agreement? So the MOU um, is being extended simply because of the survey. Um, the survey work needs to be completed. It was a timeline was stipulated. I believe. That's not right. Oh, that's the developers. Okay, I'm gonna let Rose talk. I can I can share too. This is Kristen. If you need me to, go ahead, Kristen. I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were there. Um, the yeah, the the delay is because um they did get their approval for their survey work done later than they in anticipated. So the survey is underway now, and the developers agreement has not been um, returned to them yet. Um, so they just asked for more time. Um, and I have talked to Nick Patterson from T wall enterprises today. Um, they're very anxious to keep this thing moving forward and, um, appreciate 
not having to come back um, numerous times for amendments if things get delayed in the future. That's why this is delay is extended until June, um, and they don't anticipate any other delays. So actually, um, I, I would be seeking an amendment on the floor of this MOU because it doesn't address the ultra survey delay. It only extends it to June 1st. So I guess I did pose that um, I did pose that uh, suggestion to the group prior to this meeting today, but I would just ask that council approve this MOU subject um, with the amendment also um, extending the Alta survey to that June 1st date as well. It hadn't the 40, we had 45 days to do it and um, the Alta survey hadn't been um, we weren't even under contract till I believe like a couple of days before the due date. So there was no way for that survey to be completed within that time frame, And that's why um, I suggested that they extend that portion of the MOU, the um, overall, the overall extension to June 1st is nice. I mean, I guess it gives us more time, but um, I would just ask that that amendment be made on the floor today so that I would be, or Kristen would be authorized to make that amendment within the document and send it back to see you all. So what item do you want, are you suggesting rather, should have an amendment to it? I'm, I'm not seeing survey in the, what we have before us. Are you just saying add it in? So we're adding, I, I, I'm going to raise this. So I'm, I would be looking for a motion to amend this MOU um, to allow the Alta survey to also have a completion date that coincides with the new completion date? Rose I think that's sufficient. It, it's, it, it's underway, but Alta surveys take, well, Alder person Rand can speak to them, but they are a little bit more complex than your run of the mill survey. It's not something you can get done in a week's time or a couple of days time. I can, but yeah. whatever. <laughs> can. <laughs> All right, is there a motion to make that amendment to the MOU? Yeah, I'll um, I'll make that motion. Okay, motion by Went. I'll second that. Second yeah. by Written. Does anyone have any questions on what we're doing? All right, let's take it. We're taking a vote then just on the amendment. Go ahead. Went. Aye. Written. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Holthouse. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel. Aye. Kilps. Aye. Cash. Aye. All right, thank you. And now we'll take, if there any other questions or comments on this, just we'll take the vote on it in its entirety. Alyssa. Britton. Aye. Bartz. Aye. Holthouse. Aye. Wagner. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Wetzel. Aye. Kilps. Aye. Cash. Aye. Went. Aye. All right, thank you. Um, our next item then is comments and suggestions from citizens present. Seeing none online, seeing none in the room, I'd look for a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Motion by written. Second. Second for cash. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Right. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.